Have you plateaued with your race times and just can't seem to break through no matter how much you tweak or how much harder you train each cycle? Well, the answer may actually be found in the training you're doing between your races. In this video, I'm gonna explain why this is from a training physiological perspective, and I'll make it easy and fun to follow along with some glass. My name is Jeff Gaudet, and I'm the founder of Runners Connect. I'm a former professional runner, and I've now been coaching adults and recreational runners for the last 15 years. My writing and lectures have been found and featured in Runner's World, competitor magazine and many more if you've plateaued in your progression then this video will explain why and how to get yourself out so let's dig into the why the training between your goal races might actually be more important than the training in the weeks leading up to your race when we look at how training progression works we can easily see how it plateaus occur when you don't train effectively between goal races I think the easiest way is to do this using a graph this represents a year of training when your focus is just on two goal races each year as you can see, you start in January with a fitness level of four hours for the marathon. As your training progresses, you slowly get fitter until on race day, you're in 350 shape. You've improved 10 minutes. That's not too bad. Then you take a small break. You don't stop running completely, but you don't have a direction for your training. Maybe you cross train a bit more, but overall, you just don't focus on running. As a result, your running fitness slowly decreases. I know technically it increases on this graph, but the y-axis is your fitness level and time. It doesn't drastically drop and you don't go back to zero. Then August hits and you start getting serious about your November marathon. You pick up your 16 week training plan and you get to work. The problem is, since you're again beginning your training from the same starting fitness you did in January, the progress you make only gets you back to a 350 fitness level. This cycle repeats from 16 week plan to 16 week plan. You're stuck in a plateau. Now, Maybe you decide to train a little harder the next training cycle, hoping that the increased volume and intensity will help you break through the start of the plateau. But that's not going to result in huge progresses in fitness. You'll make marginal gains if you don't get hurt from training too much, but you're not going to see the needle move much. Now, let's take a look at what your progress looks like when you're training appropriately between your goal races. As you can see, your progression from January to April is the same, so you finish your 350 fitness. But this athlete focuses on training in between the races. Yes, your fitness takes a slight hit after the race as you recover properly, but the progression isn't as rapid as when you're in an all-in training mode like the 16 weeks before a race. You're simply putting in smart, specific work, and more on what that means later, nothing crazy and not even at 100% intensity. The result is that you start your training in August for your November race where your fitness level is equal to or maybe even slightly behind that what you did in November. Consequently, you make progress from August to November and finish in 340. This is how you continue continually make long-term progress. So when did this not apply? Well, like all discussions on training theory, I know I'm going to hear in the comment section, well, I did basically nothing between my last two races and I still improved. Well, that's good for you. But here's the likely reason why. Beginners and those who have previous race times are nowhere near their potential won't hit this plateau for a couple of years. This is because your starting fitness is so low compared to your potential that the progress you make in training is fairly dramatic. As a result, your regression between goal races doesn't get you back into your initial starting state. As you continue to get closer to your potential, you'll eventually run into the plateau problem. Moreover, it means you're not progressing as fast as you could be. So it's apparent that training between your races is important. The question really is, how do I train between races to maximize my potential? The good news is that if you don't want to, you don't have to be in full bore training mode between races. You can still reduce the intensity, mileage, and focus, and make progress. Here's how. You need to focus on your weaknesses. That means if you're a speed demon, or you've noticed that your shorter distance races are better in comparison than your longer races, then you should concentrate on endurance-based workouts, long runs, and aerobic development. If you're an aerobic monster, say if you've run a few marathons in a row, or maybe you're an older runner, then you should focus on improving your speed and mechanics. The reason this works so well is that even if your intensity is reduced, is that it allows you to even out all of your energy systems and balance everything out. When you're strong in a particular area or focus entirely on one distance, the primary energy system used for that event are maximized in training. The energy systems you don't use get little work and eventually lag behind. Unfortunately, at some point, you will hit a point of diminishing returns where your stronger energy systems can't progress until you improve the lagging system. A good way to visualize this concept is to think about how window blinds work. To raise a blind, you usually have to pull two strings at the same time. Each string controls one side of the blind. If we imagine the blinds themselves to be your race performance and the strings to represent the separate energy systems systems, you'll find that you can only raise one side or pull one string so far before you need to also begin raising the other string. Therefore, by focusing your training correctly between the races, you're able to make progress long term even without training as hard. 
So now that you understand the need to work on your weaknesses, how do you practically implement this advice? It's simple. You take the training between your goal races just as seriously as you do during the race buildup itself. And by serious, I don't mean intensity or even mental focus. I mean, just putting thought into how to work on your weaknesses rather than just taking a break or running easy until your next race training cycle comes. If you need some help with a specific workout, a schedule, or even some motivation to stay on track, you may want to consider one of our six week boot camps. These boot camps are designed to help you structure your post race recovery and improve your weaknesses so that you can keep making long term progress. The simple to follow daily structure of our boot camp programs is what has allowed us to deliver results to hundreds of runners since we launched them. Here are the boot camps we are currently offering and what weaknesses they may work on. Our bulletproof injury and prevention. So you'd like to add a little bit more strength work to your running plan, or maybe you'd like to get started finally getting rid of your injuries for good. This boot camp will help you cut through the confusion and stay on track to not only learn how to add strength work the right way and get healthy, but make sure you stay on track and get the results you want. We'll mold you into a stronger, faster, and more resilient runner through a targeting strength training and injury prevention plan. Our speed development bootcamp will spice up your training and dust off the cobwebs of your speed, or we'll finally help you get some if you've never really had it. Our six week bootcamp will incorporate some new and exciting workouts to your training to get your legs moving fast. Plus you'll have strength work to prevent injuries and plyometric and drills to get your muscles firing explosively again. Our weight black loss bootcamp is perfect when you know you need to have a little extra weight that is holding you back and you want to get ahead of the typical holiday weight gain. Or you know that just losing a few pounds has been a long time goal. This is the bootcamp for you. Our daily running and strength plan combined with a step-by-step -step nutrition and guidance and accountability will finally help you get to the path of long-term healthy weight. Our mileage building bootcamp is an awesome bootcamp if you have a goal of running a marathon or half marathon, but you're just not currently running enough mileage. Do you know your progression is limited by not being able to put in more miles? Our mileage building bootcamp will give you a step-by-step -step plan to safely build your mileage while also adding the strength and intervention work to help ensure that you stay healthy. And finally, our beginner bootcamp is perfect if you've never really attempted to run before or you've tried a few times but just can't seem to stay consistent. You keep getting injured or you just can't progress the way that you want. We'll help you get there with our beginner runners bootcamp with daily mileages, exact paces, included strength and injury prevention work, plus access to our amazing team of coaches. We know we can help you build you into a stronger runner. I'll leave a link in the description below to more information on how to sign up for each bootcamp. But here's a brief recap of what's included in each bootcamp. A completely customized training plan for each day of the week with included off and cross training days as needed. You'll have personalized strength training workouts based on your experience level and your goals. You'll also get injury prevention and treatment plans based on your previous injury history. You'll also get optionally a private small group team of runners to work with who are going through the same challenge. So whether you decide to join one of our boot camps or not, I hope you take this advice to heart and really start focusing on the time between your races so you can make, continue to make long-term progress.